going to try this again. Try this again. I don't have no problem until this last week. Now they don't want me to go live no more. But that's all right. We're going to work around that. We're going to work around that. All right, I had to go live from my phone, so we had to work. It wouldn't let me go live straight on Facebook. It just was, it was crazy, but that's all right. We gonna, um, we just gonna work it out and see what the Lord say. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Come on in and share it. We just gonna spend some time together this morning. And say what Lord ever you want us to do that's what we're going to do so you guys forgive me for looking off to the side because my notes is to the side but we're gonna get started in just a moment just a moment thank you Jesus thank you Lord I'm glad I cleaned my desk up behind me so you can't see my my, my junky desk can't see my junky desk could you turn it down just a little bit more just kind of make it in the back for me so the, today, you know, um, again, for those that may not know me and they may be jumping in for the first time or even watching the replay, I'm Dr. Jewel Williams, and this is Mountain Movers Prayer. It's every Thursday at 1030. Um, been faithful doing that now. This is my second year of doing that and uh, thanking the Lord for what he's doing. And so we've been praying this month through the names of God. Amen. And so we're going to continue to pray through the names of God. So just give me a couple of moments to still trying to get some shares going on here. Just give me a few moments. a few moments amen amen alrighty all right good morning Tasha good morning so today I'm starting off with uh, and today we're talking about how his name is provider. God is our provider. And so the first name that I want to share with you is Jehovah Jireh. Since I can't have my little fancy scream, somebody write that in the comment for me. Jehovah Jireh. And, and it means the Lord will provide. And it only occurs once in Genesis twenty two fourteen. Let me read that for you. Genesis twenty two fourteen. Hey, Miss Tiffany, Genesis twenty two fourteen 14 says, Abraham named the place Yahweh, uh, Jehovah, Jireh, which means the Lord will provide. To this day, people still use that name as a proverb on the mountain of the Lord. It will be provided. And so really, when we look at, let me pull up my scriptures. I mean, everything just went a little bonkers for me this morning, but that's okay. You know, sometimes you still got to be willing to go through when stuff is getting out of the way. I mean, I think that's just a, a, a good example of when we say that the Lord will provide. He provides for us when things are going haywire, when they're not going the way we want them to go. And so if you look at the whole of Genesis 22, this is when it says, it starts off by saying Abraham's faith 
was tested. And this is when God told him to come up to the mountain and to, to, to offer him this son. I don't know. Every time I read that scripture, and when the first time I read it, I said, well, wait a minute, Lord. This is the promise he's been waiting on. Why would you make him sacrifice the very thing he's been waiting to receive? And I don't know about you, but sometimes that is a hard place to be when what you've been waiting for, when you've been hoping for, what you've been saying, God, provide to me. He then says, okay I'm going to test you in that thing is that thing that I gave you more important to me so I'm going to test you in it I'm going to allow you an opportunity to be willing to sacrifice it and so here we have Abraham where God tells him to sacrifice this son and I appreciate how he goes and he says even before they go up and he said we're going to to sacrifice and he tells the son in verse 8 God will provide a sheep for the burnt offering my son even though God told him the son is the one you're going to sacrifice to me this speaks of Abraham's faith he said God God is going to provide and he went on up and what happens we know the rest of the story and that is he did provide God offered that 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 um that provi he provided that sh that that lamb that sheep rather he provided that sacrificial offering that there was that ram in the bush if you will and so Abraham he provides us with this understanding that God will provide so when we talk about Jehovah Jireh he is the Lord to provide even when he asks us to do things we don't understand even when he uh, asks us to sacrifice stuff we don't want to sacrifice we there's a reason behind it and so we just want to say even as we start prayer this morning Lord help us to understand the reason behind the testing help us to understand that there's a purpose you aren't being some God that just give us to us for a moment and then take it back because you know that's what the enemy will want us to think well that wasn't really your promise that wasn't really your blessing he wants us to think that God is going to take from us that which he promised to us but God is a substantial provider he will not only provide for you but he will make sure that you are sustained and so that is what is important to us to understand. When we again talking about Yahweh, Lord and Master, here's the promise. And when Abraham replies that the Lord will provide, he has really given us an understanding about God being in the place. God being there for us in place, in on time. Not an accident, not an afterthought, but he is there on time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And so when they arrived at that place, he had the wood, he made the altar, right? And when he made the wood, had the wood and the altar, he was ready to do what God asked him to do, which was to sacrifice the son. But then God says, no, don't do it because here is the, don't hurt the boy. He says, do not hurt him. He says, for what did he say in verse 12? For I know that you truly fear God. You have not withheld from me, even your son, your only son. And I just want to encourage us today when we talk about a provider there are going to be times in our lives when the very thing we have asked God for the very thing God has promised for us he gonna ask us are we willing to open up our hands and give it back to him are you willing to open up your hands and say Lord it doesn't make sense to me but I'm going to give it to you there's some marriages that he is saying right now that that Yes, he gave you that husband or that wife you've been praying for. And now you're at this place where it feels like a test. And God is saying, are you going to give it back to me and let me do what I can do with it? Are you going to open up your hands and let me provide for you what you need? He says, when you do, when you build the altar, come on, somebody. It's time for us to start building some altars unto the Lord, building a sacred place where we go and pray, where we go and fast, where we go and sacrifice. Are you building those sacred places? Places where you go in before the Lord and saying, Lord, here's my marriage. Your children, some of you got some kids that at this point, it seemed like all hell is breaking loose. But you're going, but Lord, these were the sons and daughters you promised me. Why are they not acting right? Well, I come to remind you that Jehovah Jireh, he is a provider. And he is saying, here, give it back to me. Open up your hands. Build an altar and lay your son and daughter on the altar. Lay your marriage on the altar. Lay your finances on the altar. Lay it all on the altar. Because when you lay it all on the altar, guess what he will do? When you're willing to lay it all on the altar he's going to bring that that ram in the bush he's going to bring that that provision so that you will see that he truly is 
a provider. He truly is a provider. And I just want to encourage you this morning. I hear the Lord say that real strongly. That see, there's he's calling for us sometime to have some Abraham-like moments where he's given you what you asked for, but now it's the testing of your faith. Do you trust him? for your marriage? Do you trust them for your finance? Do you trust them over your children? Do you trust them with everything? Then it's time to build an altar. Come somebody build an altar. Build that place of worship unto him. Build that place of sacrifice unto him. And when you do it, he will be in position. Uh, Lord God, we thank you today that you are Jehovah Jireh. We thank you today that you are the provider. We thank you that you are the one that shows up and does everything beyond what we can ask and or think. And we thank you, Lord, that even in this season where you're asking us to open up our hands and put some things back to you, Lord God, help us to open our hands. Because when we open our hands and lift our hands upward, you will provide. We say thank you right now for the provision that you have for us. Lord, I thank you for providing the answers in marriages today. I thank you for providing help in finances today. I thank you for providing comfort, Lord God, in those situations where parents are are finding difficulty with their children. Lord, I thank you because you are the provider. You are there. You are right here with us. We are not walking through these things alone. And you are not some mean and, and spiteful God that you allow us to be tested for no reason. If there's a testing of our faith, it's because there's a call for us to come higher. There's a call for us to come up. I hear the Lord say, come up, my children. I hear the Lord say, come up, my children. Come up higher because they had to go even in the sacrifice. What did they do? They went up to go sacrifice. God is saying in your time of sacrificing and letting go, it's time to come up. It's time to come up. Lord God, we thank you. Help us to come up, Lord, so that we can be in the place where you have called for us to be. We're asking right now in the name of Jesus that you do above and beyond what we can ask and or think. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Lord, we say thank you. God is a good God. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Father, we just say thank you that you are that provider. We say thank you that you have everything we need. Because Abraham said you are the provider. So he named the very place Jehovah Jireh. Don't you know sometimes, come on somebody, when you're going through a thing and it's hard, that it's that very place that you become, you, you begin to experience God in a new way. That's why sometimes we are allowed to go through some places. Why? Because God is about to teach us something new about him. He's about to, it's not new to him, but it's new to us. It is just him beginning to reveal to us who he is. He's beginning to reveal some greater depths about him. And guess what? If you didn't go through some places, if you didn't have to go through some sacrifices, If you didn't have to go through some places, you would not know God as that provider. You wouldn't know him as Jehovah Jireh. You wouldn't know him as the one that will be in place when you're ready to give up all that he's asked for you. And so he named that place Jehovah Jireh. Lord, we thank you because there's some places in our lives that you have been named, that have been named Jehovah Jireh. There's some places in our lives that have been named Jehovah Jireh. Why? Because you were the provider. We couldn't do it in ourselves. We didn't have it in our hand. We were not capable in nothing that we had, nothing that we wanted to do was able to make us be able to get out to the other side. But we named those places Jehovah Jireh because that was where you appeared to us. And Father, we thank you for continually walking with us, continually being our Lord, continually being our God and helping us as we walk through this thing. I hear the Lord say he is the provider. What do you need his provision for? He said, if you need my provision, don't be afraid when I'm asking you to make a sacrifice. It's a testing right now. And sometimes we think the devil is making us do some stuff. But I come to tell you the, the devil ain't doing everything. There's some things sometimes where God is saying it's time to make a sacrifice. It's time to open up. Why? Because I'm taking you to a new place. And I want to say this again. I hear the Lord say distinctly with marriages and children and family because the enemy has been coming really strong in this time against marriages, against family. And I want to just encourage somebody that 
that is just like Abraham had to put that son on the altar. God is saying, lay your marriage on the altar. Lay your dreams on the altar. Lay them on the altar. Because guess what we think? We lay them on the altar. We say, but Lord, I don't want to kill. But I love Abraham's message before he even went up. He said, me and the boy are coming back. Don't you know somebody need to know? Even though I'm going up to make sacrifice, me and whatever your aunt is coming back. But we coming back what even more sure why because we come away knowing that jehovah jireh is is working in my life he's working in my favor he's working it out for me so father we thank you even today lord god give us your children the ability to let go, make that altar that needs to be made in our lives. Not an altar of, 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 of to, to idols, but an altar in the sense that we are coming and saying this is the place. Even if it's a spiritual altar, it don't necessarily need to be a physical, but just in a spiritual understanding that I am coming to the place that I am putting everything that you promised me. I'm laying it before you. I'm giving it back to you. And I'm trusting that I'm coming down from this place. I'm coming down from this mountain that I'm coming back with what you have said was mine, but I'm coming back even better than when I went up. I'm coming back better than even when I came to sacrifice. I'm coming back better even than before I went to pray and went to trust you because you will be the ram in the bush and you are the one because truly the true ram in the bush was Jesus Christ himself. He was the one that took the sacrifice. He was the one that died for me and you so that we are able to walk in and have hold on to the things that God has given us. So Father, we thank you today for who you are. We give you praise. We give you honor. We are so excited to know that we are your children. We are your children. We are your children. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We pray in the names. We pray in the names. We've been praying the names this month. And, and let me say something to you so we understand. These names really talk to us about the attributes and the characteristics of God. And it's like anything else in a relationship, within a friendship, you want to know about your friend. So you start to ask questions. You're like, what do you like? What don't you like? What's your favorite color? What, what's your favorite time of day? You want to know more about this friend so that you know how to be in right relationship with this friend. As we read and study the word of God and learn more about his names and, the, and what the biblical characters named God when they called him these things, it was because that was how they were experiencing God. And I just want to encourage somebody today that God wants us to experience him. A relationship is something we experience. There's an experience in relationship. You don't have a friendship with somebody that don't don't um, touch your heart. You don't have a friendship that y'all just speak and never there's no emotional exchange. There's no happiness when you talk to them that you happy they came around. That's not a friendship. Y'all just, I don't know what that is. That's just some people. But when you have a true friendship, when there's a relationship, there is an emotional attachment. There's an attachment you have, you have, you're connected to that person. And so when you do, that's right. We, we, we need to research all the names of God. And when we research and understand them, we begin to then, guess what? We begin to have that attachment, that understanding about the attributes of God. We begin to feel it more. So guess what? When you go to pray, even if you're not calling out these names, what happens is you be go, well, Lord, I'm in this position, I'm in this place, and you remember Jehovah Jireh, because you know that's right, he came together, he helped, I mean, he came and he helped, and when he came and helped, guess what, Lord, we thank you, that's right, toleration ship, that's what it is, that, I like that, a toleration ship, and so Lord, we thank you today that we are building relationship, that's what I hear the Lord say, we're building covenant with God, we always talk about this covenant, but covenant means I come into agreement with you. And when I come into an agreement with the person in the covenant, then I have to come in and understand what the covenant even is. I can't be in a covenant relationship and don't know the, the contract, so to speak, if I don't know what the requirements are. And the requirements are that I get to know God. The requirements is that I begin to know who he is. So guess what? It's a my protection. When I get to know him, it becomes my protection. Why is it, no, why is it my protection? Because then the enemy is no longer able to lie to me. He's no longer to lie to you. He can't tell you, oh, Jewel, oh, so-and-so, you out here all by yourself and, and, and there's nothing going to happen. No, why? Because Jehovah Jireh is the provider and he is already here. He provides for me. 
me now. He provided for me when Jesus Christ died on the cross and he continues to provide for me. I ain't got to wait to the sweet by and by for the things that I'm looking for. I can get them now. I can receive the blessings now. I can see the overflow now. I can receive abundance now. Why? Because he's a now God. He's an on time God and he is doing above and beyond what we even thought or asked. And that leads me into my next name, Jehovah Shama. Somebody write that. That's Jehovah and this S-H-A-M-M-A-H. You know, I feel I feel lost. I don't have my other thing where I put all my stuff up. Thank you, Jesus. And that really means the Lord is there. The Lord is there. That's what it means. The Lord is there. And the first time we see that is in Ezekiel 48 and 35. And that's when it says, I'm going to just read what it is and I'm going to give you a little bit of background. It says, the distance around the entire city will be six miles. And from that day, the name of the city will be the Lord is there. And if you really look at the whole of 48, it's really talking about this division of, of what the city is going to lead, the vision of land. It's giving you all of these details about how the temple, the land, who's going to get what, um, how it's going to be laid out, this territory, the allotment. And so when you read it, it might just sound like, okay, well, this is a lot of just you know, land and what's going on. But instantly, I'm going to tell you what I felt by, felt by way of the Holy Spirit. And when it talks about God is there, don't you know God has made some provisions for us? Come on, somebody. Somebody understand what I'm trying to tell you. God has made a provision for you. When you read the details, it was like talking about eight and a half miles, this, eight and a half miles, this, eight miles, this, eight miles, that, eight, eight, eight. And I kept seeing all these eight, eight is new beginnings. I want to tell somebody today by way of the Holy Ghost, oh, rabas, yendere. By way of the Holy Ghost, God is making some new provisions for you. God is making a way for you, and He's going to be there. God is there. That's what it says. The Lord is there. When we go back to what I just talked about, Abraham, guess what? God was there. He was Jehovah Jireh that made up, He was the provider, but He was also Jehovah Shema, which was God is there. He is the Lord is there. He is there. Don't you know God is in there, is in position for you and I? He is there. He is making some things and putting some things in position for you. He is making some things new. There's a newness coming for many of you in this season. And we have to be willing to say, Lord, help me to see what the new is. See, God is a God of order. If you don't read nothing else and look at that scripture in Ezekiel 48, he was very detailed about what he told them he wanted them to have. He was detailed about the land and the provision. I come to tell you as children, of God. Don't be concerned about what it looked like. See, there looks like a lot of lack, but we don't serve a lacking God. We don't serve a God that has, that does not have everything. All things belong to him. And because all things belong to him, we have a provision provider who is going to give us what we need. Now, I'm not talking name it, claim it, snatch it, and grab it. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking to those that are covenant keeper. I'm talking to those that understand that they are in relationship with God. I'm talking to those that are seekers of his kingdom. I'm talking to those that have been pursuing him. Look what my t-shirt say. Well, it's probably backwards now, but it says, I am a glory carrier. 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 And because I carry the glory of the Lord, because I carry the glory of the Lord on today, and you carry the glory of the Lord on today, guess what God is telling you? He says, I have provision for you. I am the Lord that is there. God, we thank you that you are the Lord that is there. You are there. You are present. See, he's a present God, so he's right here. But don't you know he's already there in in your future. He's already there. When you get a prophetic word, for example, let me let me just teach a little bit right here. When you get a prophetic word, I can come and tell somebody today, God says you're going to be a millionaire status. You're going to have millionaire status and that you're going to be able to provide for your family. And I'll catch this because I'm saying this. You catch it if you believe it because I'm catching it for myself. Many of you have struggled, but God said you are getting ready to move in this newer season into millionaire status. That don't mean you're going to have your million right away, but you're moving into the be able to be a carrier of millions, right? I don't have the millions today, 
right? But because the word says that I'm going to be a millionaire status, he already knows what I'm going to look like. He already knows my future. He's already there. He was in my past. He's now in the present, but he is also in my future. He just waiting for us to get there. I need y'all to catch that. He waiting for you to get there. He's already there. He is already there. They named the place, the city. They called it, the Lord is there. They said, we're building this right now. We're going to build this in according to what God says, but the Lord is there. When you begin to build the kingdom, when you begin to build what God has called you, because remember, this is a city in Ezekiel 48. They're talking about all of this. They're building for the city. But guess what? You and I are kingdom builders. Whatever you build it, even if you're building marketplace, if you're building a marketplace ministry, that's still kingdom. So I declare over your businesses that you will be able to say that the Lord is there. He is already there. So Father, I thank you. Father, I thank you right now that you are providing for us, that you are not only Jehovah Jireh, the provider, but you are also Jehovah Shammah. You are the God that is right here. You are the Lord that is right here. You are right in place. But not only you are you there, you are here, but you're there. You're in our future. Now help us to align with the future. Help us to stay in position. I heard this and I'm going to say it again. The Lord said, do not get out of position. See, the enemy comes and tries to make us wary. If he can make you wary and get... um get discouraged and hopeless then you can step out of position and then you then when you step out of position you step out of provision when you step out of provision you step out of promise see let me say that again when you step out of position you step out of the provision and then you step out of the promise god wants you to stay in the promise he will give you the provision and he gonna be the provider for you come on somebody thank you jesus father we give you praise right now because you are now god you are here god and you are there, God. I thank you, Father, for everything you are doing for your children. I thank you, Lord, right now that we are standing and we are making our our, our, our our commitment sure we're not going to move out of place. We're going to stay here. I heard this a long time ago and I've shared it before. And it made me think what Deborah said, God is in my cup. You know, the Lord showed me a long time ago about our faith. He said, David said, my cup runneth over. But God said, how big is your cup? I said, Lord, what do you mean how big is your cup? He said, don't you know your faith determines the size of your cup? So if you got little faith, you got a little cup. But guess what? It's still overflowing. But I said, Lord, give me a cup the size of the ocean. And that still is going to overflow. Lord God, extend us. Help us to have that big cup. Huh? That big cup like faith, Lord God. That even in the midst of things, because I tell you, it get hard. If somebody tell you this is an easy road, it ain't going to be me. The enemy comes against you constantly. Why? Because he does not want you to make it. The enemy comes against you because he wants you to get discouraged. The enemy comes against you because he wants you to feel like you can't do it. But I want to come to say today, Lord God, you said our cup runneth over, but we no longer gonna give you a thimble-sized cup. Our faith is expanded. Expand the faith of your people right now. We want to give you a big, crazy-like faith. Our faith is as big as the ocean and that cup that still runneth over. And Lord God, we thank you because you're the Lord that is there. Father, we thank you even in this new beginning for many, because remember, even in the scripture, they kept saying eight, eight, eight. Why? Because this was a city they was getting ready to build. It was a new city. It wasn't yet built yet. The land hadn't been distributed. So even the, the measurements reminded them of this new beginning. I declare to many of you right now, you are in the stage of a new beginning. This is an eight for you. Uh, we're getting ready to roll into the to an eight month. This is the time of a new beginning. This is the time of a new release. There's some bigger things coming your way. There's some bigger provisions coming your way. And Holy Ghost, we say thank you that you are providing all that we need. Oh, Oh, 
Corre bebe be si ke da la yunto si ke bebe sian de bebe anko re ba anka ti ke ne ono so. I hear the Lord say, in this new beginning, I am giving you feet of fire. Thank you, Lord God. Feet of fire, feet of fire. I hear the Lord say, your feet of fire. Why feet of fire? Because you know, let's just be in the natural. I'm very visual. If your feet was on fire, you wouldn't stand still. God says he's giving you feet of fire because many of us have become too comfortable being stagnant. We've become too comfortable being complacent. God is breaking off the spirit of complacency. He said, I'm going to put fire to your feet. He said, and I'm breaking off doubt. Because the enemy has been messing with many of your identity. God said in this season, I am confirming and reaffirming who I say you are. He said, because there's a there. there. He's in your future and he's waiting for you to come there. He's waiting for us to journey to the new place. He's already there. Let me tell this to somebody. You trying to start a business and you worry. God says, I'm already there. I'm already there. I'm there. I'm there. I'm there. Somebody hear it for me. He's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. He's there. Come on, somebody. He is there. He is Jehovah Shammah. He is there. He is there. Oh, my God. You, you, you're worrying about, am I going to be a good parent? But he said, I'm already there. I'm with you. I'm walking with you. I'm helping you. I am already there. You want to start a new uh, school. I hear somebody wants to do something with school or either go into school but I hear something with school and 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 I see you going through this thing of well I don't know about this I don't know about that I'm, he said but I'm already there don't you know I was the one that gave you this thing he said if I gave you this thing then I'm going to be the one that's going to carry you he said go move move no more stagnation no more stagnation he said I'm going to build you and I had the Lord also say remember in this Ezekiel the whole chapter 48 because they in that 35th verse is where it says that the Lord is there that's the name of the city but I'm coming to you to tell you God said he's building building he's building he's building all right, Tanya Berry, you a new teacher. Oh, Lord God, we thank you for Tanya right now in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Don't let it make you afraid, but know that God says he is going to be the provider and he is going to be the sustainer. So, Father, I thank you for what you're doing in Tanya's life. Lord God, I thank you for just giving her the, uh, the, the creativity on the things to do. And I hear the Lord said, your safety is in his hand. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we give you praise. And as I was saying, they, they were built. This was the name of the city. They was building a city. I come to tell you today that God says not only is he trying to bless you for you, but he's trying to bless you for cities. He's trying to bless you for territories. He's trying to bless you bigger. He's got to bless you bigger. I hear the Lord say, I need y'all, y'all prayer and your focus to come higher. Because sometimes we just get called and saying, Lord, I need, I need me. And, and and he's saying, that's good. I got you, son and daughter. But I need you to get you off your mind and get kingdom focused. Thank you, Jesus. I'm talking to Jewel too. Because see, the enemy gets us stuck in those things that are, are hindering us. But God said, when you start to think bigger, he said, I'll take care of all of the lesser stuff. You just think bigger, think bigger, think bigger, pray bigger, pray bigger. I'm going to show you what the Lord told me one time. He said, Jewel, don't you know, when a king comes against another kingdom, he doesn't fight the peasants. A king goes to try to take out the king. Why does a king try to take out another king? Why? Because then he can take all over the, over the whole territory. So God says, when I come to battle for you, I take the devil out. I'm not worried about the people, your haters. I'm not worried about this, that. And he said, because once I take the devil out, the haters got to stop because they're no longer getting the orders from the enemy. Come on, somebody. God wants us to understand. He is trying to give us a focus for kingdom. And when we begin to pray right, when we begin to walk right, when we begin to understand that he is there, we're able to do above and beyond what we thought we could do. Why? Because he is will, uh, with us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The next name is El Elyon, the most high God. And that's E-L and then E-L-Y-O-N. The first time that's seen is in Genesis 14. Again, you guys, I apologize that I'm turning to the side because I guess, you know, it was just something last week that... Uh, 
this thing, my system just will not let me go. Now, it don't stop me from going on from nothing else. It just will stop me from going live for this. But that's all right. See, God is a provider. He'll show you how to work it out. It wouldn't let me go live on Facebook. I had to pull my phone out. So we just go. That's okay. See, when you don't, when you don't mind looking a little foolish, when you don't mind looking a little crazy, you will go and move and watch God show up. See, I don't mind that I got to look to the side. I, I don't mind that if you could see my setup on how to do this, it's okay. Hey, why? Because I was determined that I was going to do what God said do. And God said that's what he needs, some determination. Because when you show up and determine to do what he called you to do, he is He is a promise keeper. He already there. He already there. See, the enemy wanted me to say, no, nah, well, maybe today I won't go live. It don't matter if I don't pray. The devil is a liar because God was there. He was there. He was right here, right now with us, showing up in this situation, showing up in this place. And I, I am grateful for him for what he is doing in the name of Jesus. And so El Elyon in the first was this was now this is a deep one. This one blessed me. This is in the 18th verse. It says and Melchizedek, I always mess his name name up. The king of Salem and a priest of God most high brought Abram some bread and wine. Melchizedek, Melchizedek. So El Elyon means the highest or most high, right? And we know El is also Elohim, and Elohim uh, uh, is really talking about God and how he is more than one. So this is the God of the triune God. This All of God's power is showing up, and he is the most high God. He is showing up. But let's look at this Melchizedek, and I know I'm messing his name up, Lord Jesus, and I was saying it so good earlier. But anyway, his name means king of righteousness. His name means king of peace. Now, what's interesting about this, this priest who shows up in this scripture and gives uh, Abraham this bread and this wine. And if you go again, look at all of the, the, the chapter. This is when Abraham rescues Lot. When Lot, you know, what wasn't what it was supposed to be. But he's there and Abraham comes in. He commands his men. They go and they go get him and they 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 um, rescue him. And then uh, Melchizedek, he comes out to bless Abraham, right? So when he comes out and blesses him, it says he gives him this bread and this wine. And what is so important for us to understand is when they do the study, they don't really, there's no background on this priest. There's, he, he, he just seems like he just came out of nowhere. Don't you know he is a, as image, he's a, a, a presenting to us a, a shadow, if you will, of Jesus Christ. Because God, Jesus had no beginning. He has always existed. You cannot pinpoint when he came. You cannot pinpoint when God existed existed because he's always existed and so this is just an example a shadow a foretelling of Jesus and I appreciate that it says that he was this king of righteousness this this king of peace came out and blessed Abraham don't you know that I want to tell somebody El Elyon the most high God he is this king of peace he is this king of righteousness he wants to bring you some bread and some wine the bread of life he wants to bring you the opportunity to be able to eat and be fed he brings the wine the wine offering he pours out unto you what all that you need he is that bread he is that water he is all that we need he offers to us the, the communion wine of communion he offers Offers us relationship. Don't you know when you say I am in need, when you fight in a battle, even if you fight somebody else, trying to help somebody else in battle, God says when you intercede for somebody, because Abraham in this instance shows us an, an intercessor. In this instant, Abraham shows us an intercessor. Don't you know God is calling for intercessors in this season? He is calling for his sons and daughters and say, Are you ready? I need you on the battlefield. I need you on the forefront. I need you out front praying, interceding for somebody else. The enemy wants to keep you focused on yours and no more, but God says, no, no. I need you in position. Lord God, help us as your children get in position because when we fight the battles, when we come to war, I thank you, Lord God, because when we come to battle, El Elyon is going to show up. He's going to bless us for the uh, what we put out he's going to bless us why because we were obedient to do what he called us to do the most high god says i will be with you i am there already 
I am the provider and the sustainer. I am going to help you walk this thing out. He said, and I am, I am. I am that I am is showing up. If they don't understand who your God is, that's okay. Because he's big enough to handle the naysayers. He's big enough to handle the enemy. And he says, I'm going to show up and I'm going to bring you the bread and the wine. You will be sustained in this season is what I hear the Lord say. God is saying for many of you that have battled. Jesus. For many of you that have battled and been on the forefront for a long time, I hear the Lord say this to you. I hear God say, I'm going to sustain you. I'm going to feed you. There is coming a rest over you. I declare right now by way of the Holy Ghost and the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ, I speak a refreshing wind. Blow through you right now in the name of Jesus. Hit you right where you are in the name of Jesus. I declare fresh wind hit you. I declare it right now in the name of Jesus because God says I am the bread and the wine. I give you what you need. I sustain you because you've been battling. See, you wasn't battling by yourself. You was battling with him because when Abram went out, he said, when Abraham went out, he said he took his 300 and some our men with him so that he can go rescue Lot. God, I thank you that the angels in heaven are with us when we fight these battles. We are calling for the angels. Lord God, even as I pray right now, everybody on this live, everybody on this replay, I'm coming to do war. I'm coming to do battle. I'm coming by way of the Holy Ghost. I'm not fighting in jewel because jewel don't have no power. But I call your angels, the angels assigned to you to walk with you, encourage you, and fight the battles for you. Because you are, that's right, Tasha, we are not alone. I come by way of the Holy Ghost. Lord God, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, the most high God, the most high God, the most high God, the most high God, the most high God. El Elyon, the most high God, he is with you. He is with you. He said, I will sustain you. I hear the Lord said that spirit of poverty thinking must break off for you. And I'm not talking about poverty just in finances, but many of us see ourselves as without provisions. I come to tell you what El Elyon said. He said, I'm bringing you bread and wine. I'm bringing you that which will sustain you you. I'm bringing you that which will, will feed you. I'm bringing you that which will encourage you. I'm bringing you that which will bring you into communion with me. Uh, we're taking communion one with another with God. We thank you, Father, that you are an awesome God. Huh? We thank you, Lord God, that you are the God most high. We thank you, Lord God, for there is no lack, right? There's no lack. Huh? We thank you, Lord God, uh, that you are the one that sustains us and keeps us. Oh, God, we give you praise. Father, we thank you. As I'm reminded, as I go back through the names, we said, Jehovah Jireh, the Lord will provide. You are the provider, Lord God. You provide the sacrifice. So as your children, we really come like Abraham and we lay everything important to us before you. And as we lay everything important to us before you, like Abraham, we have faith to believe that we're leaving this place. We're leaving the place we stand now. We're leaving the situation we're in now. We're leaving it. And when we leave it, we're leaving out intact. We're leaving with our provision. We're leaving with our promise. We're leaving and not only leaving, but we're leaving having exhibit, exhibit experience rather that the lamb showed up. The ram in the bush showed up. Thank you, Lord God, for many right now. I hear the Lord say a ram in the bush. The ram in the bush is showing up for you. What you thought you was going to lose, God said not so. He said, I am provided. I hear the Lord Oh my God. Oh my God. Jehovah Shema. The Lord is there. Not only are you there, Father, but I thank you. There's no place you and I can go that he isn't there. Come on, somebody. You're going through a hard place. He's there. You're going through a good place. He's there. You're going through a lonely place. You're not lonely because he there. You're going through a sick place. He there. You're going through a lack place. He there. And he is provider. Come on, somebody. So even in the place that you are, he is still provider.
Thank you, Jesus. Because see, Jehovah Yahweh simply means Lord and Master. He is the Lord and Master over everything concerning you. There's nothing in your life that he does not know. He's not caught off guard. He's not unaware. You and I may be caught off guard, but he never is. He never is. Thank you, Father. Thank you. El Elyon, thank you because you are that high priest. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You are that king of righteousness. You are that king. You are the king. You are the king of righteousness. And Lord God, we thank you today that you are the great provider. Now, Father, I pray for your children on this live today. Lord God, and I just give your praise for them. Lord God, I thank you for Tiffany right now. I thank you, Lord God. She says you're the all-knowing one. So, Father, you know her beginning, her end, and you know all the in-betweens. So, Father, because you're the all-knowing one, I thank you, Father, that today you are providing her with wisdom. I speak wisdom over you today, Tiffany, that God release wisdom over you and all the things concerning you. I speak wisdom on your job, wisdom in your finances, wisdom even as you begin to get ready um, for that season when this new mate is going to come because you know what happens when God's ready to send you somebody the enemy tries to bring in all the counterfeits but I thank you the Lord has given you wisdom so that you don't fall for no counterfeits thank you Jesus so father I thank you for the you being the all-knowing one for Tiffany in the name of Jesus Lord God I bring you Lynn pastor uh, Ellis in the name of Jesus uh, she put hallelujah Jesus and Lord I thank you because there's a higher praise I hear the Lord saying coming from you Lynn in this season there's being a higher praise hallelujah is the highest I hear that and hallelujah Jesus the highest praise to Jesus I hear the Lord say for you Lynn that God is getting ready to take you into a next level of praise your worship is about to be off the chain you are a worshiper but God says you're about to experience in him and in a new way and even so as you worship with him he said you're going to be prepared to see that even when you speak even when you preach even when the word comes forth from your mouth there's going to be a greater fire i release the fire over you right now in the name of jesus Lynn. i thank you for the fire being released and as you pray and as you preach i just see lord god that there's going to be a greater manifestation of his power yes right i see it thank you jesus Lord, there's going to be a greater power in you, Lynn. I see the Lord saying there's greater power coming from you. You've been seeking it. There's a hunger in you. And God says, I've heard that hunger. I've seen that hunger. He said, and I'm going to bring it forth in the name of Jesus. Signs and wonders, great exploits shall follow you. It's thus said the Lord about you today, Lynn. So, Father, I just pray into that right now. Like my short say, my shirt say, I am a glory carrier. Lord, Lynn is a glory carrier. Now, as a glory carrier, let her go forth and disperse the glory in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. That's right. A new level, a new level, a new level. Thank you, Jesus. And I think I saw, I, I'm waiting for your name. Let me see. I thought I saw, thank you, Jesus. May I have to look over here. Excuse me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Uh, Tanya, I saw Tanya. I saw you wrote healer. Father, we thank you that you are the healer above all other. There is none like you today. And Father, I thank you for the healing virtue that is going to not only come to Tanya, but that goes through Tanya. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, I thank you for opening up the, the healing anointing in her life. You often... um. Tanya are just you you are moved when people uh are, are sick you are moved about sickness you, that that grieves you to see people sick and that's because that's how God wants to move in you and through you that's right a new season of help the health that not only comes to you but then remember I said earlier that see God is doing stuff in us uh uh come on somebody I like that she said I had stage four cancer but I thank the Lord because see he says I'm 
healing you right so that you can heal others. The enemy tried to kill the anointing in you. That's what I hear. The, the enemy tried to kill the anointing in you. As I said earlier, see, God says there's a newness coming. And with this newness, is you're going to build cities. God is sending you to a place where you are going to be able to see people get healed. I declare that and I won't take it back. Father, I thank you for Tanya Berry in the name of Jesus. Father God, release the anointing on her. Lord God, release it fully, 100%. Let it be by fire that it comes forth in her. Let no fear, no doubt, let nothing stand in the way. Lord God, we thank you for all that you're doing in her. We thank you, Lord God, for the anointing. Lord, we say thank you for all that you're doing in Jesus' name. Yes, God. Yes, God. I hear Catherine Coomage. Come on, somebody. Catherine Coomage. May the Catherine Coomage like uh, mantle fall on you fresh in the name of Jesus. May you feel that thing hit you in the name of Jesus. Uh, and you go into worship because God says, watch what I'm about to do into you. Oh, my God, my God, my God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we thank you, Lord God, for who you are. Father, you are an awesome God, a mighty God. We give you praise right now in the name of Jesus. Pamela, Pamela, fresh fire anointing. I release fresh fire anointing off of you right on you right now in the name of Jesus. God says, I'm burning off some old things. And I'm releasing some new things. I hear for you, Pamela, that God says that he is going to give you the opportunity to be able to do some things that that you've been planning for that you hadn't had an opportunity to do because it seemed like the doors kept closing God said it just wasn't the right time it was the right thing it just wasn't the right time he said it was the right thing if you didn't mishear him because sometimes when things don't go right we think well Lord maybe I didn't hear you he said you heard me right it just wasn't the right time he said but now 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 I'm opening the door and I am there come on somebody he says I am there now walk through the door he says he is going to do what you need him to do. Thank you, Jesus. I speak provisions for you, Pam, right now in the name of Jesus. God says, I will be the provider. I will sustain you. I will give you the things that you need to do. And he said, watch me do it. It's going to be bigger than you thought. And it's coming to the place where it won't be such a hard push, Pam. He said, I'm going to do it. I am going to do it. Not you. I am going to do it. He is going to do it. He is going to do it. Marcy, I come to, to uh, just declare to you today that you that that even when you wrote thank you father he got me prophesying through y'all text i mean what y'all typing come on somebody god i just love my daddy he told me when you said thank you father he said because you are thanking him in this season he said i'm open doors for your next season and you continue to praise him you continue to lift him up you continue to honor him uh marcy god says that in that that becomes a key for you it unlocks the doors he says i am unlocking doors for you in this season i'm unlock unlocking provision for you in this season he said when your praises continue to stay uh, in a place when you stay in a place of praise it opens those doors for you he said I will be the provider why because you are, are, are allowing me to do what I want to do in you he said you are allowing me access see I know that what people don't understand is praise is like it, it's it's access it's access it's access when you're willing to praise God when you're willing to to do what he's asked for you to do God says he op opens and he gives you access so Marcy God says for you your access comes by way of your praise your access comes by way of your prayer so continue to access him through your prayers and through your praise father I thank you because I even hear the Lord says you're going to access a greater joy in your praise you're going to access a greater revelation in your praise you're going to access greater anointing in your praise so continue to praise him and we say thank you Janice you will open heaven I declare open heaven over you right now in the name of Jesus I, I declare that th those doors that the enemy tried to close I declare that those things that the enemy tried to make you feel discouraged about I come against that right now and I break it off in the name of Jesus I, I declare open heaven heaven over you and it's like a deluge coming down it ain't no trickling little water you know how we have a little storm and first a little storm just starts to come down but you are standing in a downpour a day 
deluge. I declare a deluge of anointing, a deluge of blessing, a deluge of provision began to hit you like never before. And you began to see the things of God open up for you in greater ways in Jesus name. Sapphire revelation be yours greater revelation in the name of Jesus. Uh, God is saying for you uh, Sapphire that I have been speaking to you. You've been hearing me clearly. The enemy of your soul has made you want to doubt me. He said but no I am the revelator. I will give you revelation and wisdom and understanding and in this season he said get in my word because even as you get in my word deeper there are going to be new things I'm going to open to you. The mysteries of God be opened unto you. I declare great revelation and wisdom and understanding be your portion today in Jesus name. Father God, we give you praise. We give you praise. We give you praise. I, I saw Queen, you got the hand and the eyes crying. I thank you, Lord God, that in the praise and in the tears, <laughs> come on, Holy Ghost, through the prayers and the tears, God says, my answer to you, Queen, is yes. My answer to you, Queen, is yes. I'm taking you higher. I'm providing more for you. He's giving you deeper. Thank you, Jesus. Because as I said that then, the note came up. You said higher heights and deeper debts. Father, I thank you that that is what you're doing in the season for Queen. Because of the times and the years of tears and praising, God says you have access. So I declare access through the Holy Ghost, uh, access to the provision, access to the resources, access, access, access. You have the access in Jesus' name. I don't know if um, Leslie's still on here or not. But I declare over you, Leslie, I hear a roar coming out of your mouth in the name of Jesus. I hear a roar like never before. And it come not only when you're singing, it's coming when you're praying. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. I hear a roar. There is such a roar coming from you. Woo, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Such power, Leslie, you have not even accessed yet. I hear the Lord coming out of you. Yes, it's a sweet sound that's coming forth from you in the name of Jesus. God says, deliverer, ha, healer, ha, he's way maker. And he said, I am tapping you into all of these gifts on the inside of you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You have humbled yourself under many. And God says, now I'm going to elevate you before many. Thank you, Jesus. Eh, oh, Get ready. God is going to send you to some overseas places. I see you going to China. Aha sekete okune kina kande kiana kane katere kana kono kike asakata akane kana nke yon to kuna iya ta iya nakata kian konte kese. I see you going some other places. Eke kana nakata kuti kita tata kata sike une siya basa. Lord, thank you for the international 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 you might be going for one reason to sing but god gonna get you in some places where not only you're gonna sing you're gonna prophesy you're gonna preach god says you are the full package come on somebody oh god we give you praise we give you praise keisha 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 thank you jesus thank you jesus keisha i see you God says you have such a boldness. You so unique because I think you had red hair and I think you had blue hair. You don't care about what people think about you. God says that's the kind of anointing. That's the kind of person he needs that you don't let people bother you. You walk in who you have been called to be. And so Keisha, I hear the Lord saying, get ready for your next level. Get ready for doing some greater things. I think because I think I've seen it on Facebook. I think you do something where you in front of a radio, but I hear the Lord says that's getting ready to go. I don't know if it's the same radio show, but there's getting ready to be something that's even more um, international. There's going to be something that's going to, 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 uh, to get syndicated. Thank you, Jesus. So there's something, even if it's that, not that, because I've never listened to it, so I'm not know what it is, but there's some radio station, radio something that God is going to get uh, prepare you for that's about to be even more. It's going 
Sangre to even be more international. And so I just pray into that, Lord God. Show her what it is. Give her the revelation, the wisdom, every tool she needs. Yeah, and it's going to be networking. Thank you. And Lord God, um, I thank you, Father, for all that you're going to do with that. Every provision, the right, the right producers, the right people that are going to work with her. Father, I declare that if there is anybody that would try to ride on her, on her, on her, on her, on her, on her, uh, coattail so to speak lord god reveal anybody that's not got right intentions for her because father what you're about to do for her and through her is about to blow her mind and others around her because many counted you out a long time ago keisha but god said he counted you in he counted you in because he knew he was there he was already there he was already there he was already there he knew where you he was taking you and he said continue to be obedient to him because what he's taking to you that's right a kingdom multimillionaire father and i thank you that she's going to be able to be a job provider a career provider she's going to be able to provide these things for other folks they everybody was happy about oprah but come on save keisha come on and move the oprah out of the way come on somebody come on somebody do it for keisha we declare it in the name of jesus and we do not take it back and may the enemy of her soul not come and snatch away that which you have declared over her we we declare it in the name of Jesus that it is so, it is so, it is so. I hear the Lord said that as my children, he said, continue to allow me access because I have doors that I want to send you through. Many of you are going to go to shores that you've never been before. He said, so get your passports ready. And you're not just going on a vacation. So I ain't just, don't get happy. This ain't like we're going on a vacation. You're going to work. Come on, somebody. Because God said it is now season, the time. That first scripture, what did I tell you? In, I think it was in Ezekiel when they were building the city. God says the city that he is building is the heavenly city, the kingdom. And we become kingdom builders. We become those that help build the city and help to build the kingdom. And so, Father, I thank you that you are in us, all of us now. Thank you for releasing that building anointing upon us right now in the name of Jesus. Build that builder anointing, whether we're building families, whether we're building churches, whether we're building people, because it all goes back to people. Help us, Lord God, to build the kingdom. Help us to build and be kingdom builders in this season. Lord God, give us some uh, unusual understanding. Give us some unusual big faith so that we can partner with you. So that all that you said can happen will happen. In Jesus' name we pray. And we seal this prayer. Amen and amen. I thank each of you for joining me for Mount Movers Prayer today. And we're going to continue next week with the same thing next week our topic is his name is healer oh come on somebody i'm i'm coming expecting to see some deliverances i'm coming expecting god to break some stuff off some people and i'm gonna tell you something before i go this wasn't just i don't just come to pray just because i'm trying to get face facebook famous i could care less about being facebook famous i probably it never will be facebook famous and, and it don't really matter i came and i come for this one reason i come because god wants to do something in the lives of his people and because god wants to do something in the lives of his people i have made it i've made it my business to be about his business. I've made it my business to speak what he says speak. I've made it my business to build into what he want to build in. And do you know what he want to build in? He wants to build you. He wants to build me. And so I bless you. And if this blessed you, share it. Let somebody come back to the replay. 
And even for those, I, I pray this prayer for those that will watch the replay. I pray that God would give you an anointing. God would bless you. There's somebody that's going to watch the replay that is really depressed. And I'm praying for your joy to come back, your joy to be released. I'm praying that even as you watch the replay, I see you going through deliverance, that God is breaking off that spirit of suicide. God is breaking open some things over you. And I just declare that as this person listens and hears that God will begin to do something different and hey, whoever you are inbox me and say yes God broke that off of me and father I thank you for anybody that listens even to the replay father let them receive the anointing the blessing and the encouragement and what they is they want to do and I say thank you thank you um pastor if you do want to sow a seed into me um you can do that at um dollar sign capital J E W E L capital W capital uh, I mean um D um uh, uh, Leslie, if you on there, could you write that on there for me, please? So it's dollar sign, capital J. So it's my name, Jewel, and then capital W, and then D. D is in, the D is in capital. And I appreciate that because if um, I never ask for a seed because I do this from my heart. I really do. I really do. I do this. I, I do this because I know what it felt like to be alone. I know what it felt like to be a, a castaway. I know what it felt like, mm, Jesus. I know what it felt like to need a savior, to love you and change you and break things off of you. And when he did, mm, I promised him that I would to the day I leave this earth, I'm going to praise him. I'm going to continue to, to tell somebody about him. I'm going to continue to lift him because he is my reward. He is a promise keeper. He is a provider. And I love him with my whole heart. Woo, Jesus. So I will put my cash app on the, on the um, comment when, when I, when I, um, when I get off and I, I, I humbly thank you for that gift. Thank you, Jesus. Who Jesus. I thank you for that gift. I, I just, let me say this. I know I say it bad, but I, I just got to say this. I want somebody today to know you are loved. You are loved. You don't have to earn it. Thank you, Dariana. You don't have to earn it. See, too many people. It's uh, it's it's it, the, the the D is in capitalized. I'm sorry, Dariana put the right one. But let me say this to you: You are loved. You are loved. You don't need to earn it, cause too many people make you feel like you got to earn their love. God gives us an unlimited love. And as his children, we are supposed to love without limit. And so I love you. And that's why I come every Thursday to pray. And, and, and seek God for you. So when I say that, it's not just words. That is my heart. And so I want somebody to know today, God loves you. You don't have to earn it. And if people can't love you, that's their loss because they lost the gift of you. You were a gift from God to the body. I am a gift of God to the body. And as the body, we're supposed to love the gift that God has given us. And that's each other. We might not like each other. Some of the stuff we do, that's okay because all of us got our own quirks. But we ought to love one another. And guess what? I can love you to your best self. Love me to my best self. We're not there yet. We're all striving to get there. It's a daily journey. And so let us strive together to get to our best selves. Because God is there. Because God is there. He's here with us as we're striving. But he is there when we experience that better self. Amen. God bless you. And thank you. Have a great day.